Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what's the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbour as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was travelling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along. When he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along. When he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbour to the man who was attacked by bandits? Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes. I go and do the same. A familiar story. But who is the Samaritan? It's a man from Samaria, yes? Well, yes, and then again, no. The Samaritan is the one who shows mercy, the one who shows kindness, the one who cares. In every generation, this story can be retold with a different character. I'm uh, old enough to remember a famous retelling of this story from the 1980s by the Riding Lights Theatre Company. Their sketch, very radical at the time, was called The Parable of the Good Punk Rocker. It was the punk rocker who helped, even though people at that time were often frightened by punk rockers and what they thought they uh, represented. Uh, it shows how times have changed really because the uh, iconic punk rock band from the, uh, the 70s, the Sex Pistols, are now the subject of a, uh, a TV miniseries. But who would be the Samaritan today? Who would be the ones who walk on by? Ukrainian helping Russian, Russian helping Ukrainian. Who are today's minorities? Today's outsiders, perhaps in the UK, this story might be about the asylum seeker who helps the victim, whilst the doctor, the film star and the vicar pass by. Jesus' parable is meant to shock. It casts so-called respectable people in a different light to so-called outsiders. Parables, like jokes, work by surprise. It's the contrasting characters that makes us think about the story. Of course, it is a story told to show how compassion should be extended to all, regardless of whether they fit in or not. The expert in the law asked the question, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Of course, he already knew the answer. He answered his own question correctly. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbour as yourself. The answer was right. On another occasion, this is recorded in Matthew and Mark's Gospels, Jesus gives the same answer when he's asked which is the greatest commandment in the law. So Jesus knew it was the right answer. And the expert in the law 
knew it was the right answer. We then get to the real question the expert wanted to ask. The question being, who is my neighbor? If I have to love someone as I love myself, then who exactly does that include? Who does it include? Jesus explains by telling the parable. And we know this parable as uh, the parable of the good Samaritan. However, the phrase good Samaritan only originated in the 1600s. And it's an odd phrase really, because it kind of implies that most Samaritans are bad and it's the, the good one that helps. Do we do that with other groups of people today? Surely not, but maybe we do. Well, the geography of this story is fairly straightforward here. Really. Jerusalem is in the hills and the road down to Jericho descends through dusty deserts. Exactly the kind of wilderness where even today, imagine bandits lying in wait for a victim. It's a brutal robbery, leaving the victim half dead. And then we get these three people going past. There's two carry on without helping. The third one stops to help and provides for the victim's needs. Well, it's obvious the victim needs help. And it's obvious that we should help those in need. It's the identity of the person who helps that isn't obvious, just as it's a surprise, who doesn't help? You might be interested to uh, know that uh, a number of countries have what's called a Good Samaritan law. For example, the United States and Canada have a uh, law which protects people from being blamed if they're trying to help someone who's ill or injured. In Germany, uh, not providing assistance is considered an offence. In the parable of the Good Samaritan, the one who helps is on the outside. The ones who don't help are on the inside. The priest and the temple assistant were respected, part of what we might call the establishment. The Samaritan was despised and outsider and outside from other uh, ethnic and religious groups. Elsewhere in the gospel, we read that Jews and Samaritans just didn't get together at all they didn't hang out together at all and Jesus and disciples for example once had turned away from a Samaritan village uh, on another occasion Jesus uh, talked with a Samaritan woman about their religious differences that was considered a bit of a shocking thing for him to do and John's gospel even has a footnote that tells us that Jews didn't use dishes that Samaritans had touched how much of an outsider does that make you? So it's uh, shocking, really. Uh, it's the despised foreigner, the despised outsider who offers help to the wounded man. Who is my neighbor? Well, you know, actually, it's that bloke you hate. It's those people you can't stand the sight of. In every age, the human race has struggled. We've all struggled to see our own prejudices. We get a story like The Good Samaritan, it hopefully makes us see just a little, how quick we are to judge others and how quick we are to excuse ourselves. Loving our neighbor crosses all boundaries. Love, compassion, mercy, kindness, it doesn't have a flag, it doesn't have a race, it doesn't have a religion. All those things, love, compassion, mercy, kindness, are in the very heart of God. The challenge is that we should have them in our hearts too. Let's pray. Lord God, help us to be those who help because we have your love, compassion, mercy and kindness in our hearts as they are in your heart. Help us to recognize our own flaws and not to judge others harshly and to be open to helping where help is needed. For we ask it in your name and for your love. Amen. Take care. God bless you.